so sick and tired of all these useless weeds. Actually, there are a lot of great uses for weeds. Gardeners hate weeds. And for good reason. Weeds will make your flower bed look ugly. Weeds will get in the cracks in your sidewalk and in your patio and make that look ugly. Weeds will get into your garden and compete for resources with the plants you want to grow. But if you change your thinking a little bit, you realize this is actually a resource. We can turn these weeds into fertilizer. I've got seven ways to turn weeds into fertilizer, baby, baby. Seven ways to turn weeds into fertilizer, fertilizer, baby. The first and most obvious way you could turn weeds into fertilizer is via a compost pile. Your compost pile doesn't have to be some spectacular thing. It can just be a pile at the edge of your gardens where you throw spent garden waste, where you chop down weeds and throw them and let them rot. Now, if you want to make sure that all the seeds on these weeds get composted, that's where it gets a little complicated. I don't know about you, but I've almost never been able to get a compost pile hot consistently enough to make sure that no seeds pass through. No matter what happens, I always seem to have the occasional pumpkin or tomato coming up in my garden after I've composted. So if you have super seedy weeds, composting is probably not the best way to do it. But when the seeds haven't matured all the way yet and they're still green and you get your weeds early, I would just use them as a green layer and a compost pile. And as a benefit, they come with these roots on them that are loaded up with bits of sand and, or clay or whatever you have. And that soil that's on the roots is full of bacteria and fungi, which will also feed the compost pile and get it rolling. So the first and easiest way is to just take all the nutrients in these weeds, break it down into compost by throwing them in a pile. The next thing you can do is feed the weeds to your worms. This is assuming, of course, that you have a worm bin. A worm bin is super easy to construct. You can use those Rubbermaid bins. I've done that and had them indoors. You can use a bathtub like I used based on uh, the way Jeff Lawton was doing it and others. I've also used an old dishwasher turned on its side or actually on its back and then I drilled holes in the bottom of it and threw in some paper shreds and cardboard, put in some worms and just started feeding them. But the worms will break this down into compost and the quality of the compost you get is super high. Worm castings are loaded with beneficial bacteria. Great for your garden. Plus, you get the benefit of the leachate that comes out of the bottom of this tub and that's a liquid fertilizer. So as it rains and as stuff rots down and the water passes through, I'm getting the leachate from the bottom, which I can use in my gardens right away, but I'm also slowly getting worm castings. And when I harvest the worm castings, then I've got super high grade fertilizer made from the enemies of my garden. It is hard to beat that. You've all heard of slash and burn where farmers will slash down an area of woods or rainforest or whatever and 
pile it all up on the ground and burn it. And then you can just watch all the fertility flying away into the atmosphere. And then you plant in what's left and you grow. Well, there is some use for fire when it comes to controlling weeds and turning them into a resource. We found that by making biochar from materials that were all over the place, we cleared a lot of brush, we took a lot of limbs down, we yanked weeds, and we burn in pits and then extinguish the fire when it's not burned all the way through. So all the carbon hasn't disappeared up into the air. It's actually being sequestered into the charcoal there. And so that char then, we can soak with nutrients and put into our gardens and it's in the ground for a long period of time. So instead of just turning the weeds into compost, if it's woodier materials, you can actually burn them to char and then mix the char into the ground. And if you have a kiln type of a system, you can even take leafy materials and get a nice powdery char out of them, which you can use. Or you can just burn them down into ashes and use the ashes as fertilizer. I won't judge you. Ashes as fertilizer works for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries of farmers. It is a good way to get rid of your enemies. Also, you can use a flame weeder and you basically just melt the tops of the weeds so the weeds die back into the ground. In that case, they're not getting turned into charcoal, but they are going to rot back into the soil and feed it so they'll turn into humus rather than char. But fire is a good way to take weeds and turn them into something useful, whether it's biochar or ashes, or if you're just melting them down a little bit and, and boiling the cells, having them rot down into humus by using a flame weeder. Well, these weeds here are very seedy. Fire department says we can't burn right now. What am I gonna do? I don't want these to get back in my garden. Here, chicken. Here, birds. Here, have these things, birds. When you feed weeds to your chickens, the weeds are turned right into resources. And not just eggs or meat, you actually get great compost out of the chicken coop, which I have shown you guys before. You could throw the weeds down, you can let them tear them up, turn them into manure, eat the seeds, turn it again, manure it, turn it again, manure it, until it's broken down into this beautiful, fluffy, nitrogen-rich organic matter, which you can then sift and harvest and spread across your garden beds and get magnificent results. And of course, you can't forget the eggs. You're just taking weeds and turning them into something very useful. So instead of looking at the weeds now as this huge problem, the weeds are actually an opportunity to get a yield. They're out of your gardens and they're into a place where they're getting transformed into something that's very, very useful. More than one thing that's very, very useful. Believe it or not, there is a seedling peach hiding in here that I planted much earlier in the year. And unfortunately, the weeds have surrounded it and made a terrible mess. So I have to actually find this peach. So in this case, instead of turning around and taking these off to the worm bin or the compost pile or the chickens or whatever, I am going to directly take the plants that are consuming this peach and feed them to it. These weeds are going chop and drop right down on the ground. Now I've not only weeded around this little peach tree, 
I've mulched it and I've fed it because these weeds are going to rot down right here and all the work they did, all the nutrients that they gathered, the photosynthesis that took place, the carbons that they grabbed, the minerals from the soil, all that stuff is now going to this peach. So instead of them beating it and covering it and taking it over, now they've been chopped up and put on the ground. And so we get the benefits of mulch and of composting. And this is composting nature's way. Knock stuff down, throw it on the ground. It's gonna rot here, it's gonna feed this tree. And it's a super simple way to turn weeds into fertilizer. If the chop and drop is a little too rough for your gardens, and you want some serious, amazing liquid fertilizer, let's do that. This right here is a happy looking pokeweed. It's pulled up plenty of minerals from the ground here. It's next to a burn pile, so it's quite happy. So let's turn this into fertilizer. Now all you need to do is let these weeds rot down for a couple of weeks. It's usually about how long it takes, especially in summer. It might take longer if the weather's cold, but this will rot down and the nutrients that are in these weeds will then be transferred to the water so you have a liquid fertilizer. And then you can go around and water your plants with it, water your trees with it, water your flowers with it. If you want to, you can thin it out so the dilution is a little higher, though I've never really burned anything with it. It will smell very bad, but the plants that you're feeding don't have noses. They don't care. That's just the anaerobic bacteria in there. I wouldn't put it directly on something that you're going to eat right away, like lettuces, you know, or any kind of greens or something you're going to pick and eat because of the rotting down material. You just don't want that fresh anaerobic tea on there. But to get crops started out, to put down a row of corn, to feed to your fruit trees, it's a great fertilizer. And people are always asking me, how do I dilute this stuff? When you make this Dave's Fetid Swamp Water, how do I dilute it? You know, what's the ratio? And honestly, I can't tell you because I've never had it lab tested. I've used it straight and I've used it diluted and it's worked both ways. So. I just go with it and it's going to change from batch to batch and it's going to change with the weeds and other ingredients that you put in it, how strong it is. You just try a little bit if you're not sure. I mean, don't taste it, but try it on your plants and see how it goes. But this is a super easy way to turn weeds into fertilizer. Now this last method here is easy. We're going to incorporate the weeds into the ground around this banana tree. You see, we got poison ivy here. We've got some wild grapes, we've got some grasses. If I didn't want to chop these up and throw them to the chickens or chop them and drop them, I wanted them to be gone, gone, gone. We're gonna borrow a little bit of lasagna gardening wisdom here from Patricia Lanza or deep mulch gardening from Ruth Stout. Get yourself some cardboard, take the tape off it. Any tape that you find or staples and then just cover the area around and over the weeds. These weeds beneath are going to rot down into fertilizer. They will actually become food for this plant. The roots will rot, the tops will rot, and you will have really rich soil underneath and the worms are gonna end up eating them. Then you just mulch over with whatever you have available Maybe you mulch over with some extra weeds. This is a sorghum sedan grass that I grow for biomass. I'll throw that down on top of here and let it rot. If I want it to look really pretty, I could put some wood chip mulch over it or pine straw or whatever I wanted. And this area, you wouldn't even know there was a weed here. You could just crush them right out with some cardboard, mulch over the top, the whole area turns into soil. You have used those weeds to feed the ground. They're where they belong inside of your plant.
being eaten. Even in the curse, there is a blessing. There is a use for weeds, or many uses for weeds. They can tell you what the ground is like, they can tell you if it's acid, they can tell you if it's compacted, they can tell you if there's a lot of nitrogen in it. Some weeds are edible, some weeds are really good at picking up particular minerals from the ground and making them available. Some weeds fix poor soil by showing up, growing quickly, rotting down, fixing nitrogen, stitching bare ground together and healing it so a forest can come back. There's a lot to learn from the weeds and there are a lot of benefits for them beyond just turning them into fertilizer for your garden. So I hope you were inspired today. I hope you look at the weeds now and say, hey, I could turn those into compost. Hey, I could use those to feed my plants. I'm glad that there are weeds. Weeds are actually useful. Weeds can even be called a blessing. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you'll like and subscribe and stick around for more content. And also check out my book, Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting, which has now been republished by my own publishing house, Good Books Publishing. So the new edition of Compost Everything, The Good Guide to Extreme Composting, is linked below this video. Thank you for joining me. I'll catch you all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. I went to see David. David the Good We listen to Portis Head and drink spiced rum Hey hon, come check out this soil. It's taken me all day to do. Hi hon, wow, this soil is so rich. I know, it's trying to be like me. Oh my word, is this a water apple tree? Yeah, it's gonna go great in the soil. Wow, it's really gonna take off here. What's in the soil anyways? It's best you keep your business to yourself. All right, I don't need no answers. Man, I wish there was something useful I could do with all these weeds. Actually, there's a lot of use for weeds.